Well, welcome. And thanks for joining with others for this service from the Vicarage at St Clement's Castle Bromwich. Whether you're a regular member or someone from our local neighbourhood, Castle Bromwich or Smithswood, or whether you're tuning in and you're just curious, I hope you'll find yourself blessed as you join in our worship and reflection today. During this service, we can look forward to a Bible reading from Ian, a song accompanied by Chris on the piano, and Gillian will be leading us in our prayers. As usual, do feel free to join in the prayers and the worship as much as you like. It's great that you're able to join with us in this way. Well, we're still in the Easter season, remembering the different encounters with Jesus that took place after his resurrection. And today we'll be thinking about his meeting with the two disciples on the Emmaus Road. More of that to come. But first, let's begin as we normally do in this season with our Easter acclamations. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Well, I don't know how much of a light to the world you may be feeling this week. I know I've had my dim moments this week and uh, times when I think maybe I could have been in a better place. But you know, God is full of grace. He loves to forgive and if our hearts are for him, then uh, he will gladly receive us. So we're going to come to a time of, of uh, confession. And we remember as we do that, that Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. So in his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. You might just want to spend a few moments bringing to mind one or two things you know you need to put right with him today. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now, almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our short prayer. Do feel free to join in this one. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we're going to hear the account of the disciples on the Emmaus Road, read to us by Ian. This morning's reading is is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning to read at the 13th verse. 
Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all the things the prophets have spoken. The Messiah have to suffer all these things and then enter his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and asked, Is it true the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon? Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our reflection on that gospel passage as we think about what it was for those disciples walking the Emmaus Road and finding Jesus along the way. Well, we all like a bit of a walk, don't we? 
I know that for several of our fellowship, going for a walk has been their chosen method of getting some exercise. And of course, weather's been wonderful for that. The other day I was on the phone to Anne, our treasurer. I called her on her mobile and discovered she was out walking with her husband. So I arranged to drop something off at her house. Well, when I got there, some considerable time later, they were still out. Their walk had turned out to be perhaps a bit further than they'd anticipated. And with other encounters along the way as well, and a number of conversations. All socially distancing, of course. The walk had begun with one purpose, but had given rise to other unexpected encounters along the way. So the two disciples in our Gospel reading were on a seven mile walk themselves, travelling home from Jerusalem on the first Easter Sunday. It's often thought that Cleopas, one of the disciples, um, his companion was likely as not his wife, which would make sense because the stranger, who of course turned out to be Jesus himself, was invited to stay overnight with them when they arrived in the evening. Well, those two disciples also had an unexpected conversation on the way. They'd set out on their walk with a lot to think about. They were carrying in their minds and hearts a mess of emotions and questions and uncertainties about what life for them would be like in the days to come. They were trying to make sense of it as they walked together. Then Jesus, unrecognised, comes and walks alongside them and asks them, what are you talking about? The answer was, truth be told, they didn't really know what they were talking about. Nothing was as it should be as far as they were concerned. Up until a few days before, they'd been part of a new community focused around Jesus, a fellowship and a movement full of life and hope. They'd been listening to Jesus' teaching, watching him in action, seeing his compassion and power, bringing healing and hope to others, and hearing his messages that challenged the attitudes and beliefs that made God the reserve of the religious elite, or those considered deserving of acceptance. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and the people, they said to the stranger as he'd come along beside them as they walked. And then they poured their hearts out. They killed him. The priests, the government, our so-called rulers, they had him arrested, sentenced to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he would redeem us all. One can almost taste the bitter disappointment and the loss they must have been feeling as they spoke of what had happened. And as if that were not enough to deal with, there were the rumours and the stories they were hearing earlier in the day from some of the women and the discovery that the tomb was empty. What was all that about? Desperate, delusional disciples and a government interference with the dead? One can almost imagine the two of them just needing space. Some escape from the grief and the hysteria and the confusion that was infecting everything. Let's walk home, they must have said to each other. I don't know what they were expecting from the stranger as they journeyed. Perhaps just a listening ear and an opportunity to let off a bit of steam. What they got was an unfolding perspective as the stranger began to pull together the things they had once known from the scriptures with what they'd learned from Jesus and the events that had come to be. There was no denial of what had happened, no playing down of the realities and the awfulness of the suffering and death that they had witnessed. But there was the dawning realisation that what they were experiencing was not simply chaos or madness. 
It was something that was destined to be for the sake of a more glorious ending. Despite everything, God was making all things work together for good. We read that elsewhere in scripture, of course. I wonder how they were as the village came into sight and they turned towards their home. Not healed yet, but with an inkling of a possibility. Enough to want to know more. Enough to invite the stranger to stay a little longer. There was some comfort and some clarity for them in the presence of this new companion. Now I don't know why they didn't recognise him on the way. Perhaps they were usually at the back of the crowd when Jesus spoke. Or maybe there was something about Jesus that felt and sounded different. Like when you bump into someone you know, but you don't recognise them straight away because they're dressed or speaking differently in a different or unexpected context. And let's face it, the last person they would have expected to meet was Jesus. But when he broke the bread, that was familiar. That was what he did. That was the way he blessed. This was their Jesus. The revelation was complete. The conversation clear. Whether they understood it all didn't matter. What made the difference was that the conversation and the comfort and the companionship now had a name and that name was Jesus. No wonder they rushed back to Jerusalem. They weren't returning with all the answers but they were returning with a testimony and the knowledge that they were not bereft of a saviour. Despite the suffering and the cross he was alive to walk with them, to reassure and envision them and bless them at their table. And they were restored to their purpose and their identity as his disciples. You see, you can't really be a disciple of a dead teacher. All you'd have would be books and memories. But they had their teacher and their Lord back again, their way their truth and their life, as Jesus once called himself. So today I want to invite you to have a conversation with Jesus over these days of, yeah, confusion and mess. For some, that mess will include a, a real experience of suffering and loss. It may be that Jesus feels like a stranger to you at this time. Talk to him anyway. Tell him your questions, the hopes you once possessed and fear might be lost, the doubts that inhabit your thoughts, or the inconsistencies you struggle with amongst your friends and loved ones in their own situations. There have been many times when I've encountered Jesus while I'm walking and thinking, and sometimes those occasions have been at times of particular heartache or anxiety or, or being unable to make sense of my life and my circumstances. And just when I think I've become tiresome and beyond his capacity to put up with me, he speaks a word of clarity, reassurance into my life. And I know he's there and I can trust in him. So whatever it is that's bugging you or getting you down, whatever doubts or questions you have, make all of those things part of your prayers as you walk with Jesus. You might even want to fit those conversations into your actual walks as you do your daily exercise or just find a particular time and place at home to reflect with Jesus. You probably won't get all the answers that you want but sooner or later, when the time is right and the table of your heart is set, Jesus will rise and bless 
and you'll recognise his presence and his love for you and know that he is the way, the truth and the life for whatever the future holds. All of us have our Emmaus Road moments, but there are also the breaking of the bread moments, when Jesus makes himself known in some new or unexpected way, and we find ourselves re-energised and filled with good news to share. So my prayer for you is that as you trust him with the journey and listen for his voice on the way, he will bless you with moments of joy and realisation that you can share with others. And my prayer is also that we might all learn to be like Jesus, ready to listen well to others, to be wise and sensitive in our speaking and encouraging, and able to stay long enough with them in one way or another to bring blessing and joy to them whoever they are, wherever they live. Amen. In a moment we're going to sing a song, but before we do that, we're going to pray together again. And this is the special prayer for this week, the Collect, for this Sunday. So we pray together. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord. Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to sing together a lovely worship song by Stuart Townend and Keith Getty, Speak, O Lord. And after we've done that, Gillian will be leading us in our prayers. Oh 
Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you now, we acknowledge that you are the King of Kings and Lord of all. Yet you willingly welcome us into your presence with open arms. You are our rock, the faithful one, full of grace and the one on whom we can totally rely. Thank you that we can bring our concerns to you, knowing that you will hear our prayers both those spoken, out loud, and those within our hearts. As we heard in the scriptures today, the men walking along the Emmaus Road were so caught up in the moment, they were confused and distracted, and did not recognise Jesus as he walked alongside them. Lord, when we feel overwhelmed by the constant media coverage of this pandemic, and are fearful of the uncertainty of what lies ahead, Help us to focus on you and to know your presence with us throughout each day. We pray for our government, world leaders, scientists and those involved in logistics as daily they assess the ongoing situation and make decisions which affect the lives of all. Grant them wisdom, Lord, and a willingness to share expertise for the good of all. We pray too for all who are involved in the NHS, community care, transportation, food supplies and deliveries, and the many volunteers who are helping those who are vulnerable. In our news bulletins, we hear little of those countries where there is great poverty and where the effect of the coronavirus will cause even greater loss of life and economic ruin. Lord, we pray that countries with greater resources and relief agencies will have compassion on those who do not have access even to the most basic healthcare provision and provide as much support as possible. Normally at church, many different groups would meet together throughout the week, coming together in fellowship and friendship and offering support to people in our local community. We pray, Lord, that through the wonders of technology and acts of kindness, we would continue to support people as best we can. May we be mindful of ways in which we can demonstrate your love for all. We pray especially for those who are unable to leave their homes, those who are finding this situation difficult to cope with mentally, those who feel fraught while trying to juggle work and homeschooling, those facing financial difficulties, and for those who are unwell. Give them the strength, Lord, to face each day, firm in the knowledge that your steadfast love never ceases. Lord, we pray for all who mourn the death of a loved one, whether that be recent or over time. Help them to draw strength from the precious times they shared together, the blessings they gave and received. In the times of silence and emptiness, may they be very much aware, Lord, of your tangible love supporting and upholding them. We think especially of Val and Martin as they mourn the death of Martin's brother Brian who died this week and of the family and friends of Dorothy Cottrell and Elsie Worthing. In the coming week, despite the current situation, may we be thankful for our many blessings and may we draw strength from the inner peace and warm embrace of Christ's unconditional love for each one of us. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together now as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. So, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, as we draw towards the end of our service, I just want to uh, just mention uh, one or two things. First of all, if you're looking for extra resources for prayer or, uh, or Bible study or just some information on resources available for you, uh, then do feel free to visit our website, uh, stclementschurchcb.com. And there you'll find um, resources from the Church of England and from the Birmingham Diocese and one or two other places as well. And you'll also find some information or links to information from the local authority uh, should you need help and support due to the current COVID-19 crisis. I do want to say it's been lovely to hear uh, uh, during the past couple of weeks the things that people have been uh, doing to support one another, the way people have been phoning one another up. I know a group of ours that have been uh, communicating on WhatsApp have uh, come together to produce um, knitted mask extenders or ear defenders for nurses and other people using PPE. And uh, that's been great to see. And I know that some of them have been delivered uh, to hospitals and other places just recently. Our local Cars Area Together community group on Smithswood has been uh, also um, uh, giving out information uh, and, and support. So you might want to check their Facebook page as well as other local uh, community Facebook pages. There are all sorts of opportunities to get support, but also to be able to give it. So I hope that during this coming week, you'll be able to find ways of blessing people, even with just a phone call or um, a word of encouragement uh, over social media. We're going to finish now with a blessing. So now may the light of Christ, rising in glory, scatter the darkness of our hearts and minds and turn our brokenness into songs of salvation. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and serve our risen Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.